Hello, and welcome to the podcast that discusses all things gaming. Coming to you from the home of Indie Popcon, Gen Con, and the gaming capital of the world, we are The Established Facts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 169 of The Established Facts. Uh, on episode 169, we are going to be talking about improvisation and improvisational games. Um, so before we get into our discussion, we're going to go ahead and go around the table. Uh, we'll start to my right. We've only got a couple other people at the table tonight uh, for our discussion, but we do have one very special friend, and then, of course, we have Josh. So we're going to go ahead and go around the table and introduce everybody here. I, I'm Josh, introduced <laughs> twice. <laughs> That's right. And then, of course, uh, Josh and I's very good friend from New York. I'm Peter Spellos, actor, comedian, denturer. Mm-hmm. I'm a Pisces. I love long walks and risotto. Never mind. Good squad. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, am your host, Big Don. And uh, as I just uh, kind of introduced uh, Peter, he is uh, not only a very good friend of ours, uh, we've known Peter for... Coming on three years, it's about two, a uh, little over two and a half years. We met Peter in September of 2015. Well, your math skills are impeccable. And uh, Peter is actually, uh, again, not only our friend, but also our improv comedy mentor and coach, uh, sensei, as you were. And uh, we wanted to have him on our show tonight because we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about some of the improv games that we like to play when we're all hanging out and then also how improv affects other areas of our gaming life and just life in general. So, uh, Peter, we love when we have uh, somebody who's new on the show to kind of give us uh, a little no, bit this of is background. my second so, time on the show. It is his second time on the that. show. I know that. As back, in, back in the uh, city that will remain nameless. That's right. I know That's that. That's right. <laughs> I remember that. Because I was there. The, yes, what I was going to say was I would like normally when we have somebody on the show for the first time, we have them kind of talk about some of their background, some of uh, the things that they're working on. I don't think we did that when you were on the episode the first time. I think we just kind of chatted about some of the stuff we were currently working on. But Sometimes, Peter, we got to let him finish what he's saying. Yeah. He makes no, sense. that's okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. As we like to say, it's a half-hour show, so right, you know, speak fast. That's right. So, uh, Peter... Uh, we would love to know why we should know who you are. Um, you should know who I am um, <laughs> for any other particular reason that I'm your friend. That's right. But uh, my background is in improvisational comedy and acting. Uh, uh, I'm 64 years old and I've been doing this since I was 16. I started out in New York City where I'm born and raised. I was a member of the First Amendment Improv Company in 1977, which is 20 years before most of your listeners, listeners were born. Uh, I'm an actor, g- comedian. Uh, I've been years in radio. I did a hundred and some films and TV shows and 40 different cartoon series and um, I, I became the man I said I would be as a young actor and, and, and improv really was the gift that gave me my career because it taught me how to not be so hung up on the result of things and to just be in the moment, be very present and if something didn't go well or right, you moved on. So uh, I've had improv companies from Los Angeles to New York to Indiana to London right now. And I've been very blessed to have done this, as I said, for as a career for 40 years. And now uh, I get to come to Indy to teach you guys and have created the Breakfast Anytime Improv Company here in Indiana, as well as the, the Improvicons, my Transformer-based improv company in London. And uh, not bad for an old fart getting to do what he loves still. I think, uh, I think I'm a pretty lucky guy. That's right. And travel internationally at least twice a year which is yes cool. I, I, absolutely and not steerage either which is really the best part <laughs> <laughs> um now peter uh, yes, i sir. know that for josh and i when we first came to the improv class we had a very different mindset in what we were getting into improv to do we we were originally there because 
uh, well, frankly, we had not heard of you, which I think is, uh, I think that was a huge uh, boon for us because we had no expectations walking in the door outside of we have no idea what we're getting ready to get ourselves into. Right, and I'm one of those actors, Don, that you never know my n- name, but when you see me on TV and, and you go, isn't that the guy? <laughs> you know, or, or wasn't he in, you know, just a, one of those great character actors? I, I, again, I say great because I feel blessed to have worked so much, but uh, I, I had no expectations with you guys either in Indiana. I, I came there as a quasi-celebrity to, to work on Indie PopCon, and I left with, oh, I don't know, Lots of friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and an improv company and teaching for almost three years. So it was uh, – it, it was pretty cool, my friend. So – And we and we even like Josh, which right, is really exactly, – you know, exactly. not always the case. There, there are some days I feel like the Lorne Michaels of this group <laughs> where people just don't really like him but know who he is. That's right. He's the one who but, gets stuff done. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. You are. You're the man behind the scenes. That's right. Who, of course, took a half an hour to get the wires together, but that's a really <laughs> something we want to talk about. That's right. right. Now. Um, Technical <laughs> difficulties galore. Right. Oh, man. Um, so ask, ask me anything, young man. Oh, well, so no. we're gamers, uh, as you are very well aware. That's not a question. I understand that. Okay. Right. You didn't want me to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> let me let you finish your statement. Let me finish mine. Um some of the things that happen in our in our workshops, of course, you introduce us to um, games and uh, techniques and um, different ways of kind of seeing the situations that we're in. Uh, for a lot of people, they don't even understand kind of what what would you call the core of improv and uh, like the number one tip you'd give somebody for being getting involved in improv. Um, the number one tip. A sense of play. I mean, just the thing that we do when we're kids is is when we go out in the playground and we go, you're this guy and I'm that guy and I'm this superhero and you're that superhero and we go. As opposed to when we get to adults, all we hear, and as we get as older as kids, we hear, no, no, don't touch that. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. Um, uh, improv gives you, yes, it gives you the permission to um, – now, of course, there's technique and, and, and all kinds of things – that we would get into in another show. But improv gives you the freedom to create with other wonderfully creative people and um, to bring a joy and a joie de vivre and a sense of, you know, this can be fun again. You know, again, are we taking this blank too seriously, I like to say. And improv doesn't let you. It lets you just get up there and create. And and I really think, uh, vis-a-vis the gaming community, I mean, that's what you guys do with role-playing games. It's Basically, we're doing stand-up role-playing games that has its own guidelines, like a, a game like uh, Dungeons & Dragons, because I'm not only old school, I'm preschool, okay, so it goes that far back. <laughs> um, but you create out of the moment, and I think the same skills that you use as a, as a gamer certainly have been used in improv for the last 50 years and all over the world. So, Peter, I wanted to ask, mm-hmm. uh, one of the observations that I have made, um, having, you know, ha- having only just recently gotten into doing some stage play as well right uh, I, I i wanted to ask you when for you did you realize that it was more about playing in the moment than you know being when did you finally find that freedom of being able to unrestrict yourself from your own judgment and your own i, I don don't i don't think that process ever ends I think it's a layered process. I still get up on stage. I still walk into the workshops I teach in India and London, and I go, wow, is is today they're going to find out the day I'm a fraud and I don't know anything? I, 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 if I was performing in front of a 1,000 people or 10, I'd have that same moment because um, a lot of the time a lot of the time, actors want to do well rather than just um, – playing and when you have your eye on the result it kind of takes you out of the moment i just think the more you stay in the moment and i'm probably even not even close to answering your question but um the the more it really is about being present listening to the person i mean these are skills that you need in life you know be kind listen to your partner add on to what they're saying don't negate and take the time to create this environment like you would do in a role-playing game on the stage believe me if you can see it the audience can see it 
can see it. And by the way, improv was not my first. You know, I wanted to be uh, with the Oscars just on the other night. I can't, still can't believe at 64 I haven't won an Oscar or an Emmy. <laughs> but my life took a great twist when I found improv because it gave me the permission to just be me. I mean, I knew I was funny because I was doing stand up with partners since I was 16 years old, but improv sort of gave me the keys to the castle here to just learn the technique and really create from there. I was, I, without sounding too egotistical, I was good at it from the start because it was like I found an avenue for expression that was non-judgmental. And if you followed a couple of the guidelines like cooking, you could make gourmet meals. So uh, it has just grown. I don't think I ever not question, but my process is so quick. It happens in a nanosecond, you know, and that's what happens when you do it for years. You watch young actors and they'll do a scene and then they'll beat themselves up and act, oh, I could have done this and only if I did this and I forgot to do that, Well, the, which is fine. But once you get over all that, uh, I got to worry about pleasing my parents thing, you start to create, go, okay, I didn't do that. Now next time I'll do it. You know, when I was a kid, Mickey Mantle was my favorite baseball player and he was like the greatest player in the league, but he also led the league in strikeouts. Uh, it's okay, but you got to be the New York State Lottery used to have a thing that said you got to be in it to win it. And I just knew from an early stage I wanted to be in it. I think I actually used that. We were having a conversation or at least a Facebook thread the other day talking about like our next our next workshop and, and mm -hmm. what was going to be. I think that was actually the phrase that I use is I'm in it to win it. Uh, yeah, yeah you, it was. And that's what it is. You got to be there. Um, the School of Visual Arts in New York City when I was um, a young actor – had a poster in the subways and it said to be good is not good enough if you dream of being great so i always wanted to be better than i was yesterday and and 44 years later pal that hasn't changed at all you know i want to be better a better teacher and communicator when i see you guys in three weeks than i was two weeks ago and that sort of striving to continue to grow and not thinking you're done yet i think holds an actor in a good stead and when i say an actor improviser it's all the same thing creative artist this is true for artwork for sculpting don't worry about the result do your art and then edit later all the writers out there know write and then edit don't edit as you're writing you know because you stop the creative process uh, I I remember uh, and kind of thinking about over the last two and a half years that we've been Josh and I've been doing improv with you, Peter. Uh, I can remember that first day uh, we were all in class together and we're all circled up and and we're just kind of uh, opening up, letting those walls down and kind of opening ourselves up to whatever the experience was going. Well, mo I think a lot of us. Not everybody, but uh, I think, uh, as you were kind of saying, everybody kind of has their own pace, and everybody kind of gets to that point in their own timing. Um, yeah. But one thing that I kind of realized about myself was exactly what you were just saying. For me, you know, I I had done a, just a very little bit of stage acting in, in high school, but I had done a lot of uh, different performance groups when it comes to like uh vocal music and i was in like two or three different choirs and did a lot mm -hmm. of performing that way uh and i've always i've always enjoyed uh being uh, a player of role-playing games and a gm for role-playing games and just kind of experiencing whatever happens in that moment and i think that you hit the nail on the head for me when you said that real you realized that improv was or you know improvisational acting and improvisational comedy was kind of that home that you never knew you needed to kind of right. let those walls down and i i remember having that revelation after the first day i was i was exhausted i'm pretty sure josh drove and i fell asleep in the passenger side seat on the way home <laughs> but i was exhausted but i was so excited to go back the next day it was it was the strangest sensation of being just completely energy dumped but my mind was just on fire improv is more. comedy crack yeah very you know what much. i mean it, it really is you get high from 
being present, you really don't realize how not present you are until you're hyper present in a scene with somebody or a little nervous to understand the technique and communicate it. It's exhausting. I know when I, I teach these 10 hour, you know, two day workshops with you guys once a month. I am spent by Sunday night because I have to be hyper vigilant with focus and energy because there's nine other bodies in the room I got to worry about at all time. So I think I I remember as a, as an improv actor with the First Amendment, I knew it was a good show when I came off stage and literally for ten minutes would have no recollection what just happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew where I was and everything, but I could not tell you what had occurred on stage until. I decompressed is the only way to to say it. And, you know, that told me years and years later that I was present to really what was going on. And as you get – as you move on in your technique and you get more and more confidence in this, um, you continue to get more and more present to where after a while you um, – like, like I made the drug analogy, like you need it because it, the air is rarefied when you're present. And then, and you realize, well, have I been cloistering everything I've been feeling for a long time? And that was really the revelation for me. It gave me the permission to be me. You know, that's the greatest gift improv ever gave me. It allowed me to be me. And that continues to change to this day. You know, though I, you know, at sixty-four, I have some things set in stone more than others. And, but that will cost uh, your listeners a, a drink at another time, of course. <laughs> I, I think what's been interesting for uh, for improv. Josh, you're here. I am here. I am. So you know, happy. I know. But when the other two big personalities talk, I don't have to. That's right. Um, so I'm going to now. For me, going through the improv workshops, I you were mentioning the circle, and one of the things I mentioned at the beginning and have stuck to for two and a half years is that I wanted to do improv because I just enjoy playing the games and enjoy the you know the camaraderie of this group. And as a result, um, because I've always gone into it with very little expectation other than I want to have a good time, um, I've taken these uh, concepts and I'm able to use them at work and at church and... Um, with the house and making making all these decisions when you get into a situation it's like i just kind of have to roll with it and uh but you you do it for more than just a good time josh you you have your technique has grown you you are committed to to the learning experience you know and and now like you say you're using it where life's not going to fluster you because you can deal with it. You can deal with anything. It's definitely better as a result. And I think I think I would put that out there for anyone that's ever considered doing improv, either you're the introvert or the extrovert or you've ever performed on stage or not. If you ever get yourself in a high pressure situation, uh, a few classes of improv will kind of work you out of that because I, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'2". I'm over 300 pounds. And when I turn around and a six foot two, six foot three, over 300 pound guy is looking you in the eye and telling you to get out of your head, um, <laughs> that could be a little intimidating. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it, it's the old comedy joke. When you enter a room, you enter a room. You know, <laughs> I've, I've always been that same guy, you know. But when I enter a room now, I enter it, as my coaches used to say, um, be a contribution to the room. And I think what you guys have done, uh, and certainly as we've created this uh, company together, uh, are such a huge contribution to my room and my life that it ups my game. It makes me want to come back stronger and focus more and have more energy and and and, and find what what I have left uncovered or recovered. It's a process. This never ends. I promise you, when you think you got it, <laughs> wait, something else is going to happen in the moment. And you're going to realize um, that even if you have mastery, and I have mastery at what I do, I'm a novice. I see it with, what's what's the Goethe's old saying? Um, the real voyage of discovery is not in seeking new landscapes, but having new eyes. Man, I just want to keep having new eyes wherever I go, you know. Another thing my coach used to say, he says, want to know why your back is bad? He said, you drag your glorious past with you wherever you go, you know. I, I think we all do that. I, and imp, the, imp, the gift of improv is seeing it new. You guys teach me as much as I learn, uh, as you learn from me. Um, and if any teacher says he doesn't learn from his students – leave their classroom whatever the class <laughs> Absolutely. is. Absolutely. I okay. I would 
I, you know, I know that, uh, uh, you know, our podcast, we tend to focus a lot more on gaming, but I think those principles relate exactly to gaming. When, when you are with a, when you're with a game master, with, when you're with a game developer, and they look at you with the eyes of, you don't have anything to teach me. I mean, that's when you walk away from the table and say, you know, that's fine. I, I wanted to help you experience being a GM or being a, being a creator or a contributor to what I have a passion about as well. But if you don't need that or want that, then that's fine because I appreciate my ideas just as much as the next guy, you know. I think Isaac Asimov, and again, I'm I'm, a, I'm quoting more than Ronald Reagan tonight, but it's, <laughs> it's, this is bastardizing the quote. But um, um, those of you who think you know it all really piss off those of us who do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So if, if you think you got it, mm-mm. right? You don't because there's something blocking you. There's an ego thing that gets involved with a lot of performers, and I imagine with gamers, too. Oh. You know, you think you're great at this, and then you stop learning. And the minute you stop learning, you stop being great at anything because it gets stagnating, you know. And you want to – I want to work – a coach used to say, well, why don't you teach stars? I go, well, number one, they're full of crap, and, you know, most of them, and they don't want to learn. They want to they wanna look good. Right. I want to be in a room uh, with people who not only want to learn but want to grow and and have different levels. You know, the classes, as you know, the workshops, there's no beginner improv, intermediate improv, advanced improv with me. Everybody's in the room together. Just like around a gaming table, you're going to get gamers who want to play and are novices. And then you're going to get your core group that's been playing together for nine years. And believe me, the kid coming in is more nervous than than you guys. How is he going to join the group? He's thinking, how do I fit in to people who yeah. know each other? Absolutely. Well, the common ground is like improv. Just listen and create. Listen and create. And I, it changed my life. It gave me my life. You know, I'm I'm honored to be an improv coach and you know, dare I even say sensei or mentor at this point? You know, it just I want to give back. I've had my share. Boys, it's it's your share now. It's your turn. It's the it's the talent in Indiana that I love to teach, and in London as well, and even you know in New York. Though I don't do a lot of teaching here anymore, I do occasional coaching. But it's it's a skill that will help you with whether you're a role player, whether you're a performer, or you know you just want to communicate more with your boss at work. It, it, it just holds you in good stead. So. You know, I know we've kind of discussed some of the the history of the three of us and and a lot of our other friends and uh, the people that we've gotten a chance to experience uh, improv with. Um, mm. You know, Peter has made mention a couple of times about the uh, performance company that we have connected with our workshops called Breakfast Anytime. Uh, which, if you are interested in seeing Breakfast Anytime, we are actually going to be performing at Hoosier Con the uh, March the thirty first. Uh, on that Saturday morning from 11 to noon. in the- Which is perfect, by the way, because we're called Breakfast yeah, Anytime. Absolutely. And we're doing a breakfast show. That that could not make me happier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so please come out and uh, check us out. We'll be at the Wyndham West uh, for Hoosier Con, again, from 11 to noon. In the Brickyard Ballroom. That's right, in the Brickyard Ballroom. Now, if you've never seen... You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Can You Top This here. Go for it. If any of your listeners come out to the show, and they come out to see you, I will give them their first improv class at half price. They, they can come do an improv weekend for me f- for half price. Now, I'm not going to – I'm not pitching here. I'm not going to tell you the price. You can call Don and, <laughs> and Josh and stuff yeah. like that. But I'm telling you, if, if, if there's a li- – Martin Jones, if you're listening, Martin Jones. Martin Jones was a fan who I met two and a half years ago who always wanted to do this, and now he's a member of the improv yeah, company. And he's great. He and is, he's terrific. Yeah. He is one of those civilians who's closeted insane, and that's <laughs> why, it's, yes. it's why I like Martin so yeah. much. And um, he has a thing again, for if any, I'm, I'm sorry. If any of your fans want to do this and they come up to you, um, pass it on. I would be happy to uh, uh, help any of the established facts gamers out there. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. So um, very quickly, Peter mm-hmm. and Josh, I would like to know uh, – this is something that we occasionally do at the end of a convention – but I would like to know when it comes to improv, 
What is your favorite improv game? Bartas is a poort is a man of bats. Dirt is a foot to poort is a fan in the seat. Bart is a poort is a fan. Tag. Tag. <laughs> you know, give me some room to work, boys. Will yeah, yeah. you please here? I'll, just, I'll softball into you. You just swing yeah. away. <laughs> Not a problem. I, I, I'm. I'm a big fan of gibberish. Um, Sid Caesar growing up, your show of shows, and and you young millennials, if you don't know who that blank I'm talking about, uh, go to the Google, as you always do, and, and find out who Sid Caesar and your show of shows was. Um, I just love gibberish. I, it's it The freedom of not having real words but having full intent is just an exciting, exciting for me to, way to do improv. And we always do it in our shows which is sort of like you come to my house. This is what you're going to eat, right. you know. Josh? So, I, nope. I, 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 one more, yeah. God, because I can start listing games for every um, word play games. The one word games, the stuff where you can't think far ahead, and the team is working together. You know, anything that's really everything we do is ensemble oriented. But and and by the way, we do short form rather than long form. And again, look it up. I, I, they're not paying me enough to have that discussion on air here. <laughs> but but um, the, the word games, the, the, where people have to listen and create. Um, I guess those are my favorites. I I think for me, especially over the last uh, year and a half, as we've been introduced to more uh, performance based games, I think I've found a few that I'm really a big fan of. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say the one I forgot to say. Go on, go on. <laughs> Number one, I love the imaginary friend game. Yeah, that that's the one I forgot to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love that one. Uh, the imaginary friend game, for those who don't know, is you basically you're, you go into a bar, you sit down to have a drink, and your imaginary friend from your childhood just happens to be there, and you have a conversation with said person. I mentioned it in our uh, year in review about uh, that was probably my favorite game, like, period of 2017, playing that with uh, Lip. Libby now Boven. That's right. Um, so, uh, and we will play that at Hoosier Con. Boys fan, and girls. Yes, imaginary friend, come on out for that. And the other one is because of our first performance in October. I really alphabet the 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 single letter uh, starting starting a sentence with a letter, and your partner has to start it with the next mm-hmm. letter in the alphabet. And I played this game with Don at our first performance as <laughs> Breakfast Anytime, and just just had a ball with it because. With especially with working with Don, we get to kind of have that not brotherly but brotherly exchange. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, where you're trying to up the other person, <laughs> but it also has to make sense. Right. So I enjoy. Well, I haven't. I haven't even begun to taught you the, teach you the screw your buddy games you can play on stage. <laughs> with improv- hey, Big Don, what about you? What 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 are your favorites? So I. See well, how I can turn. See how I've interviewed for a long time. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was yeah good. thank you very much. Yeah, I, I think I have a career at this someday. <laughs> um, I would have to say uh, I agree with you, Josh. With Alphabet, Alphabet is one of my favorites. Um, and I actually did. I did. I play. Yeah, I played that one with Dick Wolfsey. Uh, on uh, Wish TV well, Dick, Channel if you're listening, 8. I know Dick is recovering. He's not been well lately, but uh, I love you, brother, and get better, and I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks. So That's there. Right. That's right. Um, and then one of our newest uh, performance games that we did was Airplane. And I know that to an extent, Airplane kind of turned into a lot of crazy, but that was probably, for me, that was one of my favorite games Simply because when given the time, you can just turn it into the most hilarious. I'll never forget Peter's coughing man in the very beginning and then having uh, taking on the Harvey Weinstein role. Those were my favorites. It was and we're so not going to tell you any more about it. you got to come to see That's Who's right. Your Con to see. We'll be playing the airplane game um, right. as well. So anyway, so... You know, I am really excited about Hoosier Con. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Hoosier Con in a future episode, but uh, well, it's we, not that much of a future. The well, convention's in like at least like posted like three weeks. Yeah, I know. I'm so just saying. it's yeah, close. We'll see. we'll see. Okay, I'm um, I'm back. I'm back in Indy two weeks from Friday. So <laughs> okay. there we go. Actually, I think an episode drops the Monday after he gets back. So okay, well, we can. We'll we'll be hanging out on Friday. I think. 
We'll see. They're, Maybe they're, we can do something. For those at home, they're very much like a married couple. Yeah, we are. You know, <laughs> they bitch and they argue and then they hug later on and they bitch. And it's it's really – I'm getting all missed. You know, you guys go on without me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we hope that you come out and see us at HoosierCon. Uh, again, that is March the 30th and 31st and April the 1st. Uh, I understand that there is another event of some sorts going on that weekend. And then also <laughs> Christmas. Christmas. I mean Easter. Uh, the other church holiday. Um, so okay, for those of you who are not going to HoosierCon, Indiana Comic Con is going on downtown. When you're, oh, is when, it? when you're done, I didn't know that. Yeah, sure you didn't. Um, <laughs> f- when you're done spending your money at Comic Con, which you know, good luck there. Come in and come to the free convention that's, that's right. out at the us. Wyndham and have some real fun. That's right. Um, and f- <laughs> you know, for those of you celebrating the the the. Easter holiday or whatever, please be that's safe. The holiday, safe. That's the holiday with the rabbit, right? Yes. It's, yeah. Exactly. exactly. So, and the chocolate eggs. There's a lot going on. And, and I know Anime Crossroads just happened, so sure. I hope people had fun with that. Yep. Uh, Avital went, so maybe she'll give us a report next time we see her. Yay. Um, anyway, yeah. So. As, oh, the Neverending as, Dungeon. At, yes. Oh, Let me make right. sure I say Thank something you. about that. Which actually was my uh, my what I used to call my ex-wife. The Neverending wow. Dungeon. <laughs> Well, obviously it ended though. So uh, yeah. Well. Oh no! No, oh. it never ends. Oh no, no, no! It, it never. No. Honey, let me. The take scars it from are an old too guy. deep. It never ends. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Never, never ending dungeon. Um, there, there are details. I'm going to put put a link on the That's established right. facts about it. It's also okay, and also going to be found at fearthecon uh, dot com. The never ending dungeon will be making an appearance both at HoosierCon and I believe at Indie PopCon. Yep. So uh, check Wait, out. I, I, I pledge. I'm going to pledge money to you guys. You, he right. is. So you, you 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 can each have swords and 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 battle. things and battle by, things. By the way, I'm signed up God, for the I'm 1 old. to 5 slot. Okay. So, That's I'm going to get in there and register. So, just to give you a very very brief 20 second plug or less, the Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Never Ending Dungeon <laughs> is uh, an opportunity for us to help raise money for a group out of York, Pennsylvania called the Bodana Group. They've been on saving the game and they are a charitable group that works with um Autistic children and uh, children who are people who may be victims of uh, mental abuse or physical abuse, uh, but in general they use gaming as a vehicle to be able to counsel. And so uh, we at the established facts thought that that just there was there's nothing more than we want to do than to help our community, and these people are part of that community. And so we're reaching out to them to help them raise money. They are super excited. They are giving us. Tons of swag, so please come and see us at HoosierCon. Come and see us at Indie PopCon in the future. Um, Check out fearthecharity.com. Right. They're the ones who are going to be running this. Uh, as we're we're kind of sponsoring slash being lackeys for them. Derek <laughs> and Dan are going to be running the running the event from. Mm-hmm. So check out HoosierCon.org or HoosierGamers.org yep. and get registered from either eight to noon, one to five, or six to ten, or all three if you want. It's twenty five dollars a seat. Yeah. Uh, all the money's going to charity. $25 a seat per slot. Per slot. Yep. Uh, but if you want to donate to either help or hinder, all the information, I'll have that posted up. Uh, and you well, wait, 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 wait a second. I, I, I can donate to hinder a yes, player? Yes, you can. Yes. Oh, now this is getting interesting. You can yeah. donate to uh, to drop a big nasty monster in their room and all kinds of fun And stuff. for those who really want to have fun with it, if you're there at the convention and haven't bought a slot, say, for example, it's all sold out, you can buy to kill a character on uh, on the table and take their spot. So this this is something that's been mentioned before, uh, and I know that Fear the Charity is really excited about it, and we're glad to be partnering with them and the yeah. Bodonna Group. Well, you know, a hit in New York City is ten times that. So I mean, I mean, to it's be a able good to deal. Yeah, they, they knock somebody off for twenty five dollars. I mean, yeah, I, they could put the mob out of business if you're not. Kidding. <laughs> and by the mob, I mean the thing we've seen on TV that there really isn't anything like that at all. That's right. Okay. That's right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So on episode one sixty eight, we established Pong. Yeah, that's it. Just yep, Pong. that's it. Yeah. Pong. If you'd listen to the previous episodes, we had like paragraphs. Yep. That one was just Pong. It was just Pong. So on episode one sixty nine. We have established, just like in Dungeons and Dragons, improv helps you roll with it. Oh, I see. Yeah, to roll it? to die yeah, roll play a role. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that was that was good. That yeah. was good. Yeah. I'm 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 polite golf applauding. Right now. <laughs> we don't have an audience to laugh. That's we just right. have to envision That's it. Right. 
That's right. Create that location. The, I don't know what you're talking about. The voices in my head are cracking up. <laughs> well, he's the funniest man in the room. So. That's true. That's true. That's why he's in <laughs> but, New York and, and I'm here. And yet oh. I'm not in the room. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> All right. I am in New York, where, by the way, it was 48 degrees today, and they're expecting a foot of snow by nightfall yeah. tomorrow. So, Weather is nuts. Weather is and nuts. And that's, that's why the fridge is full, and <laughs> I got the case of Captain Crunch in the basement. And, um, no, there you I'm go. There you wow. go. Just a half a case. Just, just a half, half a case. case. <laughs> it was a case at <laughs> Christmas. Will you, will you give me some room to work here, Martyr? <laughs> Jeez, you know, I haven't worked with a partner in a long time, so I just got, got to get the cadence back together. I oh, love it. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't right. know what to do when it's the two of you. I can I just sit back and go, dude. It's pretty much a tennis match. It's, That's good. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> you just uh, get your cable skills back together, little Mister. Excuse yeah. me. This is recording and sounding pretty darn good, if I say so myself. If, you know, forty minutes late, but it was fantastic. Mm, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All and right. Why cloud the issue with facts? That's so right. There, established. established facts. That's right. right. Again, I love it. No one wants to give me room. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we love you guys, and we thank you so much for listening to episode 169. Peter, we love you, and thank you for joining us on our episode. And we My will- pleasure. And then come on out and support Breakfast Anytime on the 31st at Hoosier Con at the, at the airport Wyndham. That's right. Uh-huh. And we will check you later. Bye. Bye. Please visit us at www.theestablishedfacts.com and our Facebook page, facebook.com slash theestablishedfacts. If you'd like to support us by buying some merchandise, visit cafepress.com slash castingrobot. Bonus!